day 71. Uh, today is a recovery day. Uh, day 70 to catch up uh, was a long run. Uh, got in about uh, somewhere between 14 and a half and 15 miles in a little over two hours. I was shooting just for a two hour run. And uh, it was it was raining and I was running with a buddy so I didn't bring my, my camera out but we ran out at uh, DuPont State Forest. Just stuck to the uh, the service roads uh, just because the weather was so bad. I didn't want to do any damage to the, the single track so we stayed to the, the larger um, roads out there. Um, it was great. It was nice just to, to run. Um, you know, fitness is coming around. I feel much better. Uh, you know, endurance is not the problem. <laughs> uh, you know, I felt like I, I certainly could have kept going. Uh, but uh, you know, the, the, I could tell the hills were, were still taking a little sting out of me. Uh, I, don't, I don't quite feel as strong on the hills right now, so um, good to know my weaknesses, especially if I'm going to do uh, the brute challenge, because all of them are obviously mountain courses, so I need to get my strength back, um, which start reincorporating some, uh, some core and strength. I think uh, perhaps uh, part of my problem was that I was just incorporating too much ancillary workouts. Um, so uh, doing too much core and, and strength work and it was just too much on my body based on uh, you know, how much I was running plus the power hiking, um, just a lot of stuff. And I, I also think that uh, when reflecting on my training uh, that uh, perhaps uh, I need to reincorporate some uh, higher intensity intervals when I kind of look back at you know wh how I had my best races and um, you know when I was feeling my strongest and most fit I incorporated a lot more high intensity intervals like max vo2 style uh, so I think I need to incorporate those back not necessarily anytime soon you know seeing as uh, I'm just kind of getting my legs back under me I don't want to go into such an intense um, intense uh, um, demand on my body so uh, we'll we'll hold off on those for a little bit but something that I've been you know reflecting on and thinking on is uh, what I was doing when I was running my best and those were definitely part of it um, a lot of times we kind of shy away from that intensity as especially as ultra runners just because uh, you know we don't think we need that system uh, but I mean, you know, my, you know I, I've always been a big fan of them and incorporating them in my training. And then, you know, reading Jason Koop's book, you know, he talks about, um, about using those type of intervals as well. Uh, just because they're not as specific to ultra running doesn't mean that we don't need to train that system and, and you know, prime the system and get us um, the potential for higher fitness. So um, I'd like to incorporate those. Even if it's only a, a short bout, you know, three to four weeks, uh, you know, of a cycle, uh, and we'll see how recovery goes. Um, yeah, probably one session a week, um, especially with the rate of recovery I've had. I don't think uh, I used to do two sessions a week of, uh, of those, but uh, you know, as I've gotten older here, it takes a little bit more to recover from them, and they are such a uh, demanding interval. Um, requiring so much of the body that you know, I, I think that it'd be best for me to to kind of just uh, try one session, see how it goes. Um, you know, hopefully it doesn't take too much out of me. Uh, you know, if, if you do high intensity intervals, um, they uh, they're they're pretty much 90% uh, of max effort, uh, max heart rate, um, at nine RPE. Uh, you would do the interval and then you take equal recovery. Uh, you're looking at about um, perhaps um, you know, 10 to 20 minutes of intervals at max. You know, that's the, the hard, hard intervals. So, uh, you know, five by two minutes 
Uh, Coop, you know, he's he kind of said in his book that these type of intervals, um, they're most effective when you do them for for two to three minutes uh, is the duration that will give you the most benefit and get the heart rate up in that that zone where we want it and and last the duration to give us the effectiveness of the workout. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, we'll, we'll, we'll abide by that, um, you know, and but I need to build into it. You know, I need to keep the strides up, um, working on uh, kind of, um, you know, hills, um, getting those back in, kind of building my body back so that it's it's ready for that, uh, that both that intensity and that duration. Um, as, as an ultra runner, we put this early in the training um, because it's, uh, it's the least specific to ultra running, as I was saying earlier. So um, it would be an early cycle in my training cycle. And again, it's something that I can actually come back to. I have such a, a long buildup to, uh, to Bigfoot. I could potentially do a short cycle uh, and then you know take a recovery week and then work on another system and then take a recovery and then even do another cycle of, uh, of high intensity intervals. So um, plenty of options right now. Again, I have to see how the body reacts. I want to make sure that it's producing and yielding the results that I, you know, I expect and want of that. Um, so uh, remains to be seen, uh, but I feel like it's, uh, it's something that I have not done in the past few years. Uh, you know, uh, Patrick and I had done it in my build up to uh, Chattanooga, and my fitness was great for that race. Uh, but uh, I guess just because of just my erratic training for trying to fit in events, we never really reincorporated it. So, something I want to get back to. Um, so, we'll see again how that, that goes. But uh, to finish off my thought, uh, if you are doing uh, a marathon or sub-marathon distance, your high intensity intervals would be closer to your, your goal event, to your marathon or half marathon or 10K or 5K. You would do your short intervals, um, you know, probably one of the last cycles closest to your race because it's more specific to what you're trying to accomplish. Um, you know, it's, the speed is, is what you want. It will make you sharp. Whereas, uh, you know, speed for an ultra runner, it fatigues us. Um, and it's not necessarily the system that we use uh, the most. I mean, you may on climbs and such, you know, kind of get into that higher intensity. But, you know, it, it is obviously the least specific for an ultra runner. Whereas it's more or the most specific for sub ultra distances uh, or, you know, sub marathon distances. So, um, you know, just a, in summation, uh, uh, you know, if you're training for a marathon, you can do a longer cycle as long as your body is recovering from it and still adapting to it. You know, there's, uh, there's probably up to, they say five to six weeks you can spend working on a specific system before that system is kind of, it's exhausted the capability of, of making more adaptations or gaining more fitness from from that style of workout uh, and that includes any system that you work on so if you're working in blocks uh, you know especially in the, uh, the sub marathon distance you know you're gonna want to um, work on it for four to six weeks whereas an ultra runner it's more three to four weeks at a high intensity interval whereas if we're working in kind of the uh, uh, this the lactate threshold um, or 80 to 85 percent of max heart rate you know that we can work on longer um, yeah, as, as you can in the marathon but um, you can work that four to six week duration uh, for the that style of workout so um, yeah it's, it's good to have these kind of uh, different varying systems uh working on different systems it's what uh challenges our body to uh to you know make adaptations and get stronger get fitter uh but you know keep in mind that it should be done in conjunction uh with you know uh strength and mobility to some degree 
you want to make sure the body is capable of uh, of doing this. Now, you know, when I say strength for ultra runners, that can just be doing hill repeats like I was talking about earlier, doing strides and such, um, and uh, and using hills to get stronger, um, doing you know short repeats that will build your body's capacity to uh, to be able to uh, to not get injured. Uh, so uh, make sure it's ready. For, for those type of intervals, don't just kind of spring it on the body, <laughs> kind of build up to it. Uh, you know, in your in your base phase, your aerobic base phase, uh, it's great to, to do those strides, hill repeats, uh, fart lick runs. Um, you know, I did a whole podcast on uh, on fart licks, so um, if you uh, if you look for that, I'll try to remember to put the uh, the fart lick podcast episode in the. Uh, in the description of this video and uh and then you can you know you can listen to that because it's a great thing to incorporate you can incorporate it anytime because fartlicks can be done in so many different ways uh it can be included in any phase and done at any type of intensity or duration but in a you know in a uh, a base building phase it's very specific uh so i'll post that you know in the uh in the description uh I think you can use that so many different ways uh, and you know gain so much from it but uh, yeah so um, thinking about including those those intervals um, you know uh, again I, I need a few more weeks uh, I can tell body's just not quite ready for that type of intensity uh, I would rather kind of uh, you know kind of just keep the legs coming back because they're feeling better and better um, yeah, today's recovery day. Uh, we're just taking out, you know, Mr. Miles out for a walk here. Um, we, we've had some uh, some weather here. Uh, it's turned a, a bit colder, and you can hear the wind. But um, you know, it's it's a beautiful day right now, <laughs> and uh, it's it's uh, it's great to be able to to know that you know running's coming back again, and. Um, just excited <laughs> excited to, to to run whereas yeah, a few weeks ago it was like I was, I was beginning to, to dread it just because of how I was feeling each run and knowing that it was just like I had you know nothing in my legs so total you know 180 right now um, I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum so things are looking up things are looking up and uh, yeah so anyhow uh, if you got questions, you want to ask questions on, uh, uh, you know, any of the the things that I started mentioning in this uh, in this episode, don't hesitate to reach out. I certainly appreciate it. Um, you know, a lot of you guys have reached out through various platforms, which is is great. I mean, you know, if you have questions on Strava, by all means, you know, drop a drop a question in there. Um, you can message me on Facebook, uh, on Instagram. Uh, you can email me, contact me through my website, mrrunningpains.com. Uh, feel free to ask um, got really busy all of a sudden with coaching uh, you know it's awesome I've had a, a number of people reach out to me uh, for for 2022 here and, and moving forward so uh, that's, that's really cool uh, so anyway I uh, appreciate everything guys uh, good check-in today it's nice just to get out for a, a nice little recovery hike here come on Miles. good boy um, yeah we're we're almost to our turnaround point here, so um, come on, buddy. Good boy. And uh, come on, guy, this way. Give you a shot of the, the star of the show here. <laughs> Miles, you say hey. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> I know that's what uh, that's what most people want to see is Mr. Miles. So we'll give you the shot of the day for <laughs> for seeing him. We'll get back to it tomorrow. Mr. Miles and I will go out, get out and go for a run. Um, so anyway, I hope you all enjoy your day. Thanks for joining me as always, and I'll see you tomorrow.